Katrina and this is So and Tear. So today we're going to be talking about deep litter and what is it and how do you manage it. Um, deep litter. All this right here on my pathways, these are all just chips from a uh, tree trimming company. They sent them here for free. They didn't send them. <laughs> they dumped them here for free and then I wheelbarrowed them into the yard and then also into my quail and aviaries. Uh, quail and and uh, the racking house, so it's the chickens and rabbits, um, the aviaries. And that's how I deal with uh, poop. So that's how I manage their waste, is that you make it into compost. So wood chips are browns and uh, their waste is greens. You put that together, that's compost. So we are making compost in their house, basically. So it breaks down and then you can put it on your garden you put in more wood chips for them and do the process over again. So the goal is to have enough wood chips to uh, create that little bit of heat that it takes to break things down appropriately. And let me show you how I manage that. So once you have everything in there, you basically just need to turn it and to manage it. You don't need to do anything else. If you want to, you can add more as you go, but you don't have to. You can start with a large amount and then just turn it. So. I have it in with my quail and I have it in with the chickens and rabbits. So let's see with those two systems how long it takes to manage. All right, this is the main quail aviary. It is approximately seven by 10 feet, which is about uh, 70 square feet. So for this aviary, I have about that much uh, wood chips, which has shrunk a little bit as uh, time has gone on, but I put in about that much wood chips. Thank you. Um, and I will show you how much time start managing it. I use this little tiny pitchfork for my management system. Um, you can use a shovel, you can use whatever you want. Rake, hi, a rake works too, but I find that this is a faster, easier job. You can either um, put it down into the soil, and this is what I showed in my main aviary tour, um, put it into the soil and then turn, or you can actually just go like this and fluff it. I've, I've actually um, kind of switched to more of a fluffing than a uh, stabbing and turning. It's easier on the wrists, so if you, um, you can do different ways. So, start the clock. <laughs> Found an egg. <clears throat> can even do it set down the birds love it when I do this they love to pick through it I'm gonna move the camera. Oop. Watch out, birdies.
Watch out, ladies. Watch out. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. She does not want to move. that is it 70 square feet all turned no big deal let me show you how let me show you how they like it so they immediately start picking through it I did find a couple eggs while I was doing that hello and what I do when I find them like this one right here <clears throat> If it's in an area that I know I searched through yesterday, and I know it's a fresh egg, I'll just eat it. But since I have no idea how old this is, it goes on the ground. I can't really stomp it anymore. <laughs> put, it on, put it on a stick. Um, I just pop it open for them, and they'll end up eating that once they discover where it is. <laughs> They're too busy going through everything. Oh, it looks like I dropped a little branch of the of the little bush they have in here. They love the leaves off of that. Look at that. They have a browsing line. Look at this. We have some dust bathing in there and all that. <laughs> See, she's eating one of the eggs that I broke. You found it, huh? Nobody's found this other one yet. But they absolutely love when I do this. I do it about once a week. Sometimes I don't do it quite once a week. Sometimes I do twice a week. If <laughs> this is also something that you can do if you're having any sort of um, personality issues with your quail. You can give them something to do. And this is definitely something for them to do. And you can see I've left kind of just mounds. I didn't smooth it out or anything. They'll do that for me. So I won't have to do that at all. They will um, smooth it out and kick things where they think they need to go and all that. So... Super, super easy, super, super fast, and you end up with compost, so why not? Why wouldn't you do this system? All right, let's go see how I manage with the chickens and the rabbit. All right, here's how I manage, how long it takes me to manage the chicken system. Hi, girls. You gonna manage this for me? Yeah, you are? That's it. I don't have to do anything. These girls are wanting attention right now. Because I've been away for a few days. Oh. <laughs> Come here, sweetie. Come here. But, but these little chickens, they do the same thing that I just did with the quail. With no effort of my own. So, there's your system. It takes no time. So if you're, cons if you're considering deep litter for your animals, uh, if you are doing it with chickens, they will do all the work for you. You can even just put a pile of, of wood chips in there and they'll even spread it for you to begin with. Um, if you're doing quail, then you have to be the chicken, which is fine. It doesn't take any time at all. I mean, it takes, what, a couple minutes? Um, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this and that you uh, choose deep litter because deep litter there's no reason not to there's lots of free materials for the wood chips and doesn't take hardly any time and also uh, you end up with compost so you don't have to deal with these guys' poop don't have to deal with the rabbit poop don't have to deal with quail poop and except for just churning it in there you go so enjoy your animals and enjoy your time Thanks for watching. So here's one more thing I actually do for my deep litter is I just put in the weeds that I know that the chickens can eat and 
they might not eat all of it, but they're going to spread it around and add it to the compost and turn it in. So there is absolutely no need for me to have an individual compost pile when I have chickens. Rexy's working on getting the seeds out of the grass. The other girls, they're eating their crumble, but they were helping before. Milo's pecking at stuff now. Looks like she's more interested in the roots. You getting your minerals from the dirt, sweetie? And she might actually be going after bugs. Or worms. In the root clods. So this is another way that I use deep bedding, is I put weeds that I know are not going to hurt my chickens if they eat them um, into their space and they will eat some of it. You can see Rexy's going after some bugs there in the, in the uh, oh, we've got some grapes. Um, they go after the root balls because they have good minerals and it has, you know, worms and bugs. They go after the seeds, and they do eat the greens. That's way too much for them to eat. I only have three chickens. So what will happen is they will end up uh, churning it in, and they will... Well, hello. You think I have something more for you? Do you have enough? Um, they'll end up churning in all the extras, and that becomes more compost. <laughs> so like those sticks that they're on that's peppermint and they're not going to eat many sticks <laughs> but they will rip them apart and they'll turn it into the compost so I just include manageable stuff like that for them. Yeah, I do. So I have absolutely no need for a compost pile when I have chickens that will turn my compost for me and all of that. Huh, ladies? It's yummy and fun, huh? Gives them something to do as well. If you're going to give chickens anything except for their, their crumble, you do need to provide grit. So they do have grit.